Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let us start the review of what we think is going to happen next week by going to a weekly chart of the S&Ps and zooming out and basically, basically getting a bigger picture uh, of what has been happening. I've, here I've drawn in the uh, retracement levels for the whole rally since the beginning of 16, uh, from 1810 up to the top and I have drawn in some Fibonacci extension lines and let's have a look at what basically they say and then we will marry the technicals with the fundamentals. So as we zoom in we see that this has been the lowest close of the move down since the top. Uh, the previous low was here around 60, uh, 2620 and we close below 2600. As we said early in the week, as soon as we dropped below the 25 MA, we had really not a lot to look forward to because there is no support until this next um, moving average and the weekly lower Bollinger Band which comes in around 2530. So the area of support is going to be between 2550 and 2530, but as we will be below the 200 day moving average on the dailies, there's bound to be an intensification of selling, and the uh, lower Bollinger Band is in 90% of cases, in my experience, like here, uh, well. Uh, uh, well gone through because there's a lot of selling and uh, so for next week I definitely expect for this area around 2530 to be tested and busted especially since 2535 was the previous low so expect to go down to 2500 or even a little bit lower how much lower well, funny you should ask. The 0.382 retracement comes in at 24.66. The 100% ext extension of this move comes in at 24.61. And we have a gap here around 24.60 on the weekly charts. So everything to me points uh, to this 24.60 area being extremely, extremely important. Uh, I really would not expect the market to go any further than that. Uh, I definitely would want to play it uh, from the long side from 2460. Uh, as I said, this will be the level where I take off my shorts on an area between 2535 and 2510. And this is the area where I want to buy the call spreads for a move back up towards this closing level, i.e. 2600. So 2460, 2600 over the course of the next couple of weeks, that is what I would expect. And now we can go and have a look at the individual sectors and see what they say and see if we have this area more or less banned to rights. This is a chart of XLF, which is one of the three largest components and if we do exactly the same for the 0.382s and the extensions you will see that the area of support really comes in from 2624 to 2488 let's see if we can actually enlarge that for you so you can see it a bit better 2624 to basically here 25 2488 this is the kind of area that I would expect you to trade through, which is right down to the weekly uh, Bollingers and a little bit through. So the largest component would absolutely say that yes, we are in the, uh, in the right ballpark. Uh, it might not go much lower than this moving average. Uh, and the largest component is saying that not only are we not going to get a crash on Monday, but we are not really that far away from a low. Uh, we closed at 27, 
we are talking about 1%, maximum 2% lower. So that's 50 points in the S&Ps. 50 points in the S&Ps takes you just about to where the double bottom was. So it's nothing really uh, too exciting. Uh, well, I mean, it is exciting if you're short. Making an extra 50 points is not bad. But certainly it's not forecasting. XLF, as the largest component, is not forecasting a crash on Monday. Here we have XLI. XLI has got wonderful support at 7023. Uh, after looking at all this, I've put in a 70-20 bid for myself uh, for the long term. I really like it. I really like the pattern. So if we enlarge this, we see uh, that we have a bunch of moving averages. We have the 100% extension and we have a lot of support from previous trading. So around that 70-20 uh, uh, area, I am a buyer and that is all there is to be said for it. This is basically a uh, bear flag and this is the objective from the bear flag. Happy to take a stab on the long side. And XLI is around the 15-17% waiting in the S&Ps. So that is also consistent with our analysis. A couple of percentage points down and we are more or less done for this uh, stage of the panic. From the supportive charts to the ones which are not really supportive, uh, the one that is not supportive is actually XLY. XLY worries me. Uh, XLY could go a hell of a lot lower than, uh, we are, uh, than we are at at the moment. It could go all the way down to at least 98 to 94 area. So we are talking a good uh, six to eight percent lower than where we close on Friday. Uh, that is not uh, so wonderful. Uh, six to eight percent is a good move, but on the other hand, it's only 13, 14 percent of the index. Um, what it's saying is that actually Amazon might uh, might do a quick downdraft move. So I would not be long of Amazon, but I will definitely be looking to buy it when XLI gets to 94.78. That would be uh, my level. And that is why actually this uh, does uh, confirm the view that you don't get long around that 25.30 area because there will be further selling at some stage. That is where you square up and then you wait for the last few people uh, and sectors to capitulate and you get long around that 2460 level in nice options. We should give you a nice trade up back, you know, when these markets bounce uh, back to at least uh, 2580, 2600, which is more or less where we close the week. Another worrying one which has not really done enough are the Qs and they are basically a proxy for the NASDAQ and a proxy for technology. So here we have something which is uh, not so good for the market. It basically is saying that until you get to 147.40 there's not going to be a huge amount of support here and 147.40 uh, from 158 is, you know, a good 5%. So we could get a stronger move in the queues uh, to double bottom or hopefully get to where my bid is, 147.40. Uh, quite happy to buy it there for a strong bounce and uh, it my bid is in there, 147.40. I think it'll get there if not next week then the week after but you pays your money and you takes your choice to me that is an obvious level uh, where the queues should offer a good risk reward to the upside if we look at ndx much the same picture i prefer to look at the cash charts rather than the futures charts um, 
I really, really would not want to be long of this until 6037. Um, I think it gets there. It, we have, in other words, possibly another 8 to 9 percent to go in the queue in the uh, in the technology index which is not surprising because Facebook is having a nightmare the fangs might have a nightmare uh, as well as as a total next week and if we then think about uh, the fact that uh, as I showed you just now Amazon might have a bit of a let go in a panic that is eminently doable in uh, in the uh, in the Nasdaq, that is where my bid is. 6,050 is my bid. I'm quite happy to get quite long of it there. Uh, if we just have a closer look, you'll see that there is all sorts of support here uh, from this area of trading, which lasted for many months. Then finally, from the 0.382 retracement and from the uh, objectives from the breakdown which are anywhere between 6,300 all the way down to 6,000. So we have the weekly Bollinger Band here supporting at 6,100 odd. So really anything below that and we are quite happy to buy it. I want to show you this chart just to ask you a question. This is GDX, so basically the gold miners. Does this look to you like a chart where the uh, market is worried that we are going to crash in a day or so? It does not look like that to me. This is just nothing. There is no impulsion to the upside. There is uh, nothing there that would suggest that the market is going to crash on Monday. Uh, perfectly normal range trading, not even that bullish. Let's have a look at gold on top. Uh, this is gold. You know I've been tweeting about gold basically all week. I've noticed that these butterflies are moving out uh, quite aggressively. Gold is being bought against silver. Gold is being bought against copper. Gold is being bought against bonds and gold is being bought against equities. So it looks like there's been a lot of money moving into gold uh, this past week. I guess people just don't know what to do with their money. And let's go through it um, and, and give you my view of what is happening. You can't buy bonds. Uh, you, you can for a quick trade. Uh, you can uh, sell some of your equities, you can buy a bit of TLT, but you're constantly looking uh, to dump your TLT holdings because with the Fed uh, still looking to tighten with uh, no more QE, uh, with uh, a more aggressive um, uh, winding down of the balance sheet by the Fed from 18 to 22 billion uh, per month, what have you got to look forward to? I mean, they, they're going to get inflation up towards the 2%. They will. So what is your real yield? I mean, it's it's bugger all. So given that, you're not going to be hugely aggressive and gung-ho here uh, in bonds. Um, can you really see uh, industrial metals and commodities go up? Uh, very strongly there's going to be a trade war well no you can't uh, you can just see uh, a continuation of stagnation of, uh, of of industrials less will be produced less will be sold why would you want to be aggressively long of commodities that doesn't leave you very much does it it just leaves you a bit of gold and the fact that it's not going up that aggressively it means that people are really not that worried. This is the beginning of a bullish pattern. You have the weekly MAs actually turning up. Would not be surprised to go and test this 1375 level, but we were here last year and nothing happened. Uh, 
1375 to 1400 is going to be well sold and the market might well come back all the way to 1308 on any strength in equities at all so yes we do have a bit of an uptrend but it's not the panic proportion for final confirmation of our thesis let's go to VIX which is my favorite as you know I rather watch VIX than equity prices at any stage well is this bullish mm, yes does it say crash no is it going to go up yes is it gonna go up to 40 no I think 30 ish is about as far as it goes suggesting a break of that area uh, of support that we have around 2530 2535 whatever it is just to piss people off just to stop them out just to screw with their brain and that is probably that volatility actually last week has really disappointed me um, it is nowhere near as strong as I expected it to be uh, with the market as weak as it was last week so that's a word of caution um, if somebody asked me to bet heavily on the outcome of next week I would say that it's going to be pretty mild compared to expectations um, I certainly don't see it much lower than the uh, weekly uh, Bollinger Bands and it could actually surprise by squeezing a few people to the upside before it goes back down again and I'll now show you the fundamental picture and why I think the upside is also capped you know me when in doubt go back to the earnings and the fundamentals and here we are back at 16 times earnings and we have 15 times earnings which is to me the most important support the one that always holds unless the wheels are going to come off this market uh, and, and that is around 2450 ish so it, it would not be surprising to see this market trade uh, between 16 and 15 times earnings but it's not going to be in a straight line I don't think it would be basically saying that the market is uh, somewhere has to reprice and actually hold 2600 2650 as some kind of a top and hold 2450 to uh, 2500 as some kind of a bottom that is what the fundamentals are saying it would not be uh, surprising to see this ABC extend to precisely the kind of levels that we were looking at in the mid 2500s just to annoy people to me that is a good area to uh, be long of 2500 looks uh, cheap and therefore what we were saying there 2560 which is only what not even three percent above it looks just about all the market can do in the meantime unless we get some amazingly bad news out of somewhere again I don't think that this has much to do with um, anything but the fact that when you have uncertainty in the market you tend to collapse the uh, the multiples we've gone from 18 multiple to 17 multiple to 16 multiple 15 multiple holds every time unless the wheels come off if you look here in uh, 2007 and before 15 multiple was always where the market found huge support unless a recession happened uh, in which case all bets are off so have a look at this chart decide for yourself if you're going to wait for 15 multiple in a rising market to buy it I don't think the market will allow you to do that you have to step in front of it these are the fundamentals the fundamentals are only going to change by news uh, if there is no news which changes the fundamentals there is no need to panic 
and there is absolutely no need to panic sell it's a better time to buy than to sell when the market breaks the 16 multiple because then we are into the 15 zone and the 15 zone is huge support let's look at some spreads I'm sorry there are a lot of them but I think it's important you should understand what's going on this is SPY a um, IAU gold I love this spread I just absolutely adore it uh, you can see what's happened last week I made a pile of money on it uh, here's the support just below 19 uh, this trend line has held since God was a boy and really looking for it to test down here that is another three percent you know three four percent so basically we're saying I don't know two percent on um, S&Ps uh, two percent on gold and that basically gets the spread down here uh, definitely worth holding on uh, we're well short of uh, this spread um, certainly think just below 19 where this trend line is may might spike it like it did here but that is about all we're expecting from this spread so looking forward to that next week uh, the commodity spreads are also beginning to be very interesting and let's have a look at here it is SBY DBC it, it's a beautiful chart isn't it it's making probably a head and shoulders where this is the head this is the left shoulder and now we're going to be building a uh, another oops that doesn't work here we are it's broken the 200 day uh, moving average let's get it to here the 200 day moving average is now rolling over the 50 day moving average is rolling over we have basically rolled over in DBC uh, and this one is the one that's telling us to be careful with equities uh, but on the other hand it, it, it's going to trade around here for months and months and months well when we we're, we're talking about six months so this is the one which is the longer term canary in the coal mine saying things are not all um, they seem in equity world and we you know we listen to it but it's going to take a long long time so we've upped our uh, as we tweeted months ago really uh, I, don't, I don't know about months but certainly many weeks ago that we've upped our uh, allocation to commodities out of equities uh, we upped it uh, in gold uh, against equities uh, and we upped it in bonds against equities but we are very weary of that one so we we have reduced our equity positions by over 50 percent in the past uh, ooh, uh, two months and we're quite happy with that we are owning something which is roughly keeping pace with uh, uh, with zero uh, and which is keeping our head above water if actually we look at the chart of uh, uh, the I, I love this chart DBC the weekly you can see that it's actually breaking uh, some very important downtrends uh, which have existed ooh, all the way from 2011 to 2013 2014 uh, this is suggesting that we are likely to break higher in commodity pricing and that is why we really uh, cannot get that enthusiastic about bonds because this is basically saying uh, that we are going to get the 2% inflation that the Fed will be successful uh, if that is the case bonds are going to offer very very limited reward to you and we'll have a look at those in a moment but DBC love it very long of it uh, think that every time it comes and tests the support line it's a buy think it trades quite a bit higher towards 20.
Okay, this is a weekly chart of TLT. Let me first say that I'm not really bearish of it right here, right now. Uh, can this um, can this uh, MACD turn positive? Yes, it can. Can it give us several weeks of upside? Yes, it can. But really, this 123 to 124 area to me is going to be very, very hard to break. And we are now at 120 something. So we, you know, can it go up? Yes. Can you go up 300 points? Yes. Can you go up 400? Yes. Can you go up 500? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, that is why I just can't get enthusiastic about rotating out of equities into bonds. Uh, just don't see it. Uh, fundamentally, it makes very little sense uh, to go and stick with a long-term allocation to bonds when you're looking to make two points on the upside and you could lose 20 on the downside. It just doesn't make that much sense to me. I'd much rather play it with an option-based strategy or, uh, you know, even if, you're, if you have to be long some, sell calls against it. But certainly uh, I would not want to be gung-ho about bonds here for 200, 300 points which could turn very quickly in 100 points down. Um, just not a good risk reward. And that's why I don't see uh, the equities really uh, falling out of, bond, uh, out of bed because there is no wall of money going into bonds. There just isn't. And if we, uh, if we admit that to ourselves, that means that we are having an equity repricing from one multiple to another multiple, as I showed you earlier, but that is not a panic, that is not a crash, that's just a repricing ahead of an um, uncertain time and all that does is give a, gives us a new trading range. Final word about EEM. EEM could naturally suffer next week. The 100% extension of the ABC is 43.14. Well, if he gets there, load up. Uh, it load up with calls, load up with anything you can because to me that level is absolutely a wonderful level to be long of the uh, one thing that I think will make the most money over the next 20 or 30 years. 41.72, that kind of area is a fantastic area. If you look where we are we are basically trading at the levels that we were trading in 2011, in 2012, 2013, 2014. You know my view, this is the future, this is the way it, this is the contract that will go. If you can get it here around the 4314 area, uh, the risk reward is so fundamentally on your side that not having long term calls there is almost criminal. So our bias is for next week. For the five year and the 10 year, we'll actually at some stage, I mean, I'm not saying next week, but as I showed you, we think there's very little upside in the bond market, uh, unless the stock market has a complete collapse, which as I showed you, don't think it will. As a result, we are probably looking to either sell calls on it or to buy puts on it. And that will be a decision that we'll take over the course of the next couple of weeks when we see really what, uh, how things are, uh, are performing. Uh, very little upside in these two, we think. Boons and Bobble, same thing. Uh, we're looking to get short of Bobble at a yield of about minus 14 or minus 15. That is the, uh, we can't give you that in futures because these contracts keep on changing. Just have a look at a yield chart and uh, minus 14 to minus 15 is that where we want to get short of the bobble and that's about it. As we showed you, commodity inflation is beginning to appear. We wouldn't call it inflation, we could call it higher prices, but it's the same thing. And therefore we think that this sector, the, the, the bonds have probably nothing very much to look forward to. 
here we've put in the <coughs> what we've told you 2530 is the weekly Bollinger followed by that 2460 2470-ish definitely would want to be uh, to be long there that is definitely worth a bunch of call spreads uh, no more than that NQ will be the opportunity but here we are 147 in the queues 6050 in the um, in the NQ we've written it down VX 27 to 30 percent when you when you see the VIX there uh, you've probably done all you're gonna do now We've put in here the DAX levels that we're also looking. 11,700 is the first level. And if that doesn't hold, then 11,400 will be the buy level. Don't expect this one to hold. Uh, this is where we take off some of our, in fact, all of our very modest shorts. And this is where we actually want to buy it, to be long of it. So 11,400 in the DAX. We've talked about EEM and the level there. This might be the opportunity to put this on if you haven't been able to do so far. So you can leg it, wait for XLK to get to these levels. So basically you buy XLK when it gets to those levels. Then when it bounces, you sell the uh, S&Ps uh, and you do the same uh, in reverse with EEM. So basically when XLK gets there, EEM will probably be somewhere near a bottom. So you buy these two, then you wait for a ramp and you sell the SPY. Uh, this might be very much so the opportunity. As you know, I won't be around next week, but I will try to tweet as often as possible. Uh, don't expect too much, uh, probably in the evenings or something like that. Uh, California time. Have a uh, great trading week. Hope these levels help and uh, good luck.